with the Libertarian Party takeover complete almost one year later, how do things look now? Let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, happy Tuesday there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show, and thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, running live from our Stratus IP studios here in lovely Eastern Indiana. Don't let cyber attacks or outdated business technology put your company at risk. All right, folks, let's talk about, yes, the Libertarian Party, not just the Libertarian Party, I'm talking about the Libertarian Party, the National Libertarian Party, because we've talked about, my goodness, I think going back to episode two of the show, where I started to critique then vice chair of the party about we're not going to be taken seriously unless we take ourselves seriously. Well, how do we get to actually having folks take us seriously? That was the conversation of what we brought up here at the Brian Nichols Show way back when I first started the program. And fast forward to where we are today, we see, uh, I think now the second or third iteration of leadership change in the LP. And I'm fingers crossed, hoping that we're on the, the right path now, joining us to talk about whether or not we're seeing that we're on the right path. Current chair of the Libertarian Party, Angela McCardle returns to the program. Angela, welcome back to The Brian Nichols Show. Hey there. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Angela, before we get started, number one, you've been busy not just because you've been elected as chair of the Libertarian Party, but you're also a new mom. So congrats on that. And you've been a little busy, though, trying to, I'm sure, do both of those things. Talk to us. What's been going on in your world playing both mom and now chair of the Libertarian Party? Yes. So I have a five-week-old baby. He is uh, um, upstairs right now. Hopefully you don't hear him crying. Um, usually he's very peaceful. He has three moods, right? Sweet, adorable cuddle bug, shock and awe, and pure unbridled rage. <laughs> um, but we don't experience that last one very often. It's just if he's a little bit hungry or he has a wet diaper. Same. Um, I, took, I took a week off, took one week off, and I just went back to it after he was born. I'm really lucky because I work from home. You know, I don't have to put in 8, 10, 14 hours like I was doing before he was born. So I'm, I'm taking it easy, but I am back in the saddle um, cause we've got a lot of really awesome stuff that's happening in the Libertarian party. And I'm just excited to be a part of it. And the baby's, uh, he's in a lot of zoom calls with me. He's in a lot of zoom calls. <laughs> New mascot for the Libertarian party. Yep. Uh, give yep. him a little porcupine, a porcupine hat. He'll be good to go. He has but, uh, a little, little porcupine. He does have a little stuff on. Perfect. See, you're already on the right path there, Angela. With him. Um, well, Hey, that, congratulations to you and your, your, uh, your family there. It's a great starting off point, And I'm sure. You're uh, going to be excited to see the little Liberty lover, lover you're going to have growing there in your family. But um, let's talk about the, the Liberty lovers that were growing across the country, shall we? And that is yeah. what I wanted to have you on the show today, because we've talked about many a time here in the program with you, especially, you know, who is our target audience, yeah. what the means to measure success in the Libertarian Party. And now we're at a point where we actually are seeing, I think, some real substantive change in the, the way we're having conversations as a big L Libertarian Party reaching out to new folks and, and bringing in new coalitions that otherwise we weren't really talking to. I'm seeing conversations change at least, but hey, who am I? Talk to us. You're the one who's actually seeing things from a leadership perspective. How are things going over at LP? Things are going really well. So we ended the year on a strong financial point. We went above what we thought we were going to make. Um, that's really great. We ended the year, I think, close to $2 million in revenue. Uh, which is the strongest that we've done on a midterm year in like 20 years, I believe. So that's really exciting. Uh, let me walk you through some of the outreach efforts that we have been doing over yeah. the last six months. Okay. So we kicked things off over the summer with a big uh, Bitcoin live stream and outreach to the Bitcoin community. We have developed some really good relationships there. And I feel really good about that. That has given us really great branding uh, strength. It, it makes us seem more serious. We're connected with people in, who are who are more financially minded, people in the financial sector. So that's really great. We're still cultivating and fostering some of those relationships. We've also gained some new um, social media influencers, people in the health and fitness community. I think that those are really good allegiances to build as well. Uh, his name is Mark Lebiner, I believe. He's in the fitness community. Oh, Mark Lebiner. Yeah, he's been on the show many a time. Yeah. 
So, you know, Ian Smith, he was of the, the notorious, like, I'm not going to shut down my gym fame. Yeah, out in Jersey. Yep. So those are the kind of relationships that I think it's great to cultivate because I want us to start start making alliances and, and grow our membership with members of communities that are not afraid of risk taking people who are fearless and who are courageous and want to stand up for what's right, want to speak out. Um, they're not afraid of the government and they feel very secure in themselves and, and have confidence. And I think that the LP really needs a boost of confidence. And we, we're starting to get that. We're on that trajectory, but having members like that, it definitely helps. Well, um, let's talk about, what you just said and i i wrote this down i just like put it in like 14 brackets because this is this is it this this is the problem we've seen and that is the fear of change for the fear of what might happen and in this case the risk of the the consequence they i, I think this separates a lot of not even left right libertarian it's the risk-taking versus the safe-playing libertarian. And that's, I mean, look at COVID, right? That's where I my, my last straw was, was you know, jumped on, broken, whatever the yep. expression is, because I was like, guys, we cannot play this safe. We have to take a definitive stance as a party, as a movement. This is wrong. Government overreach in this situation is wrong. Like, you can't, I mean, across the board is wrong, but like what more perfect of an example and the mealy mouth, you know, playing it safe approach to the messaging. And, and that was just, it set me off. And, and that right there, Angela, I think you hit the nail on the head is that we cannot be the, the ones playing it safe. And I think that's also, it speaks to why I've seen there is such a natural inclination in the business environment when I've been going out and having these conversations, because there is a natural understanding that in order to be successful in business, you have to take risk. One of yep. the uh, best books I ever read was from a, uh, one of my top sales uh, icons I follow. He's a startup, uh, starter of a uh, brand new, uh, they're like a uh, lead source company, but he does a lot of other stuff behind the scenes. He's done a lot of other companies and trainings and such. But anyways, the book is called Whatever It Takes, right? Like, Because you know that it's going to require risk. It's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require you to do the unpopular, the unsexy, the thing that's going to make you possibly have to, you know, face your family or face your friends and say things that they're not comfortable hearing, but they're the things that they need to hear because you know that there are other people out there who are willing and open to hear it and make change. My two thoughts. Absolutely. You're, you're totally right. And yeah, so we're, we're doing it though, right? We're doing the thing. I want <laughs> us to continue reaching out in this trajectory. Like I want us to talk to people in the carnivore diet community. I think, mm. well, actually we already do, but I would like to bring them in a little bit closer. People who question mainstream narratives. Uh, on the opposite end of that spectrum, I've noticed that there are people who are very outspoken who, who eat like, you know, super raw vegan diets like David Wolf, for example. You never know who you're gonna find alliances with. It's, it's people who question mainstream narratives. That's a good place to start looking. Uh, so we're definitely going to be doing that. Uh, same with people who are in sports who questioned the the COVID narratives. I think that we need to cultivate relationships with them as well and say, hey, you have a political home here. Um, we don't we don't judge you for calling things out. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. So you're saying that we might see Aaron Rodgers as a I'd love to see Aaron nominee? Rodgers. I'd love to see some UFC people. Um, I'd love to see some basketball players. People got benched over this stuff. And, and it appears as though everyone's being vindicated right now. You know, it's pretty gruesome. It, it's not, I'm not happy to, to see people dropping dead on the fields. It's, it's, it's appalling. But, but there is a little bit of vindication for those who said, I'm not going to do this. I'm a, I'm a conscientious objector when it comes to what the government mandates going into my body. A little off topic, but not really off topic. But I mean, looking back to really what, what helped propel you into more of a quote national spotlight, which I mean, you were already in the libertarian spotlight, but really, I mean, it pushed you more into a, a national conversation when you did your debate there over at the Soho Forum with, yes. I think it was Ilya Shapiro, correct, from the Cato Institute. Ilya Soman. There's two Ilyas. Soman. Thank you. Yes. I, I, yes. Thank you. Um, so I, I think that right there, where you were making the the libertarian case against the government mandates, and yet there was somebody who was actually willing to take an argument for the mandates. And that's the part just blew me away. Like who, 
who are we? What what are we doing? What is our role, if anything, to at least in this instance be the alternative and present a clear alternative? I mean, now looking back, it's kind of a uh, tough to to like. I mean, you don't want to say I told you so, right? But like, there are, there are people in our larger movement who want to become the new mainstream, and it's a really strong desire. And I don't mean they want to become the majority. No. Because uh, sure, everybody wants to be like in charge, the majority. That's okay. They want to become the new mainstream, and and that means watering down everything. You know, like becoming, um, you know, the three by five card of allowable opinion, and that's not that's not good. That's not no. a good thing to pursue. I, I feel that that's it's like becoming spiritually dead. It's like choosing to like deaden yourself. So I reject that. Do you, do you feel now you're looking back at that debate that that was kind of like a defining moment between where the Libertarian Party really had that big, I want to say split, but more so a decision point, right? Like of where which direction we were going to head? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good way to put it. Um, and that was a tough debate because I had to not just argue against COVID mandates. I had to argue against all vaccine mandates. So I had to do a lot of research. And I hadn't really discussed publicly much, you know, much my views on that prior to that debate. So it was like I sort of came out with my views and how I, I don't, you know, I don't have any shots myself. Or that's not something that I believe in, quite frankly. Um, and I had to defend that on stage in front of a in a venue where you had to have a COVID passport to get in. So that was no no joke. It was a tall order. You had to sneak in, didn't you? I did sneak in. <laughs> I had a fake one in case I needed it, but I did sneak in. How, I mean, how wild though, right? Like just in order to have that conversation, like to have the conversation of whether or not the mandate should be in place, the, the, the actual facility that the, the conversation was being held required the, the mandate in place. It just, it really speaks to, and, and this kind of goes back to why I got so frustrated with my trust the experts friends back at, at the very beginning of this this entire thing because they were they were saying look at what all these people are saying and i'm saying and i i used to say no no that's that's all the people that have been allowed to speak i was like anybody else that's raised up is instantly shot down or you know just unpersoned so you're completely removing people from the actual conversation and then presenting that what the, the small group and, and it doesn't need to be a small group you could just be the loudest group as as the the vocal majority and that wasn't the case and the the, the number one thing you gotta look to to just see that that was the reality was the vaccine uh numbers like after the first dose i mean how many people actually got their boosters right and then yeah. who got the booster to the booster those numbers just precipitously drop Ooh. yep exactly so that's that's definitely uh, been been a critical thing in shaping the direction of the party and really been like a signaling mechanism for other people who who might want to join. We've done outreach to the medical freedom movement. I'm going to be continuing to do that, especially with with birth rights. Um, I intended to have a home birth. Things got a little bit uh, weird and complicated for me at the end. I ended up having to go to the hospital. And it was a disaster. And um, unfortunately, it was like my my rights were grossly violated. And when I talked about this and shared it with other women in the in the liberty community, everyone came out and said that they had similar stories, hmm. um, which I was like, well, that's not OK. We need to actually do something about that. So we have a really good opportunity to to do work for women in the in the larger liberty sphere and, and people who are ideologically aligned with us when it comes to birth freedom. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, it's like I can take something bad, you know, that happened to me and turn it into a thing for good and, and maybe also prevent other people th from going through something like that. So that's my hope. But Absolutely. there are other there are other really good things that we've been working on, too, when it comes to expanding our demographics. So I'm really excited about this uh, anti-war rally that we're planning in D.C. That's going to yeah. be huge. Tell us about that. It's called uh, Rage Against the War Machine, and you can find out about it at rageagainstwar.com. And we have a long list of demands, 
and a growing list of speakers, and it's really exciting. So it's going to be on February 19th, Sunday, that's President's, President's Day weekend at the Lincoln Memorial. We're starting about 12.30, and we're kicking off a huge rally, uh, the Libertarian Party in connection with the People's Party, which is kind of, they're kind of like ex-Bernie bros. Um, on the, on the, if you have to say they're on the left, they're on the left. If you have to say we're on the right, then we're on the right. But more on that later. We like to break break out of that paradigm a little bit. Um, we're fundraising to pay for our, the stage and riser and all the logistics right now. We're super excited. We're going to be having Scott Horton speak, um, Jimmy Dore. I was on his show recently to promote it. We're having an incredible uh, coalition come out of this. People on the left and the right, people who are apolitical, everybody agrees that opposing nuclear war is really important. Uh, Garland Nixon, we're going to have David Swanson, Medea Benjamin, um, Supreme from Wu Tang. He's going to be joining us as well. Wow. And yeah, we're going to be having a whole, we're, we're adding a lot more libertarian speakers over the next uh, next couple of weeks too. So that's that's building. Russell Brand has been invited. Roger Waters has been invited. So we're waiting. We're waiting to see if they show up. Um, but yeah, if you want to see the list of demands, you can go to RageAgainstWar.com if you want to support the event. We want as many people to attend as possible, and we are going to be busing people in from within a four-hour radius. So if you live in New York City, we've got a bus for you. So we want you to come on down. There you go. Well, and I guess two things I heard from there. Number one, coalition building. Yes. yes. Thank God. Thank you, Angela, because that's been something we needed to do. The whole like, you're not libertarian enough for the libertarian party. That used to just, oh my gosh. It's annoying. It, it's not only that annoying, it's pretentious. Like, yes, I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not exclusive enough for your little social club. Like that, that's that's how it yeah. used to be. So that that was number one. Number two, culture. The importance of Brandon, you brought up, you know, these different cultural figures. That is important to be able to incorporate them into having an, an ability to have a successful message because as much as we hate it, <laughs> the reality yep. is politics is, in fact, downstream from culture. Now, I think politics in, in some cases is formed by culture or rather a culture is formed by politics in, in inverse. But when you look at the policy itself, it is downstream from the culture because you have to get the masses on board with it first. So. I think what you guys are, are focusing on, on bringing people to the forefront who are talking to your average person who they're not plugged into what's happening on you know the, the, the news all the time. They're more plugged into what's happening on TikTok or on the reels, right? Yep. So let them meet people where they're at on the issues they care about, but then do it in a different type of way. Get them to have their ability to speak to their audience and let them just do what they do instead of us telling them, well, you didn't do it libertarian enough. Right. Okay. And this event is spun in a more cultural way, too, because I love it. It is difficult to get people to come out to a boring political rally. <laughs> that's not how people that's not how people engage. People get fired up in Europe. I had a really good um, meeting today with some people from the Schiller Institute and people who have tomorrow. We're chatting with um, some people who are organizing satellite events in Europe. There's something about Europeans that, you know, we're very critical of their socialist health care and we perceive them as giving up a lot of their rights. But when they get mad, they really take to the streets. And that is one lesson we can learn from them. But the, the coalition that we're building is, is really good. It's really impressive. So we've got all on all supporting the same event. Right. We've got the Mises caucus. We've got peace in Ukraine, which is a, a little bit more. It's like the. The legacy of the anti-war left from the past, uh, the people who are really like the movers and shakers in that movement uh, 20 or more years ago. We've got Liberty Speaks. We've got the Radical Caucus. We've got Action for Assange. We've got Punk Rock Libertarians podcast. We've got World Beyond War. Um, I'm really excited. You know, we may get the Schiller Institute as well. You're, you're seeing groups from the left and the right. Um, this is this is what we need to do, right? I want to get as many people to vote libertarian as possible. Beyond that, I want to get as many people to adopt libertarian ideas as possible. If I can't get them all, I'll just get, you know, like adopt as many of them as you can bring yourself to. Um, when we get to like purity tests, you know, I think that should be reserved for people in leadership. 
And I, I'm totally fine with that. Like we can we can gatekeep leadership, make sure that someone is a very legit, very for real libertarian. But we do want to foster more of a sense of inclusion when it comes to our community. And doing outreach events like this is is the best way to do it. And honestly, like if there's one thing that we should all come together on, it's trying to oppose nuclear annihilation. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Yeah, it makes all of a sudden all the little insignificant and, and truly like they become insignificant because yeah. if we're all dead your pet project doesn't really mean anything it's sorry totally. I, sorry right it's just the truth it's just reality yeah there's one other there's one other really interesting issue coalition that i've been working on which is called the united independent movement or the independent national council and they are a group of and political independents and minor parties and they're all coming together and saying you know like we don't necessarily agree on social issues or economic issues, but we agree that governance is really messed up right now, uh, which is interesting. So at first I was like, well, this is, I don't know, is this kind of boring? But then we started to take a look at like, what do we actually agree on, right? Okay, so ballot access. Okay, well, you know, like, that's not that exciting, but you're right, it's a problem. And what about like revolving door alphabet agencies like the FDA? Yeah, that's an issue. What about like budget black holes, like the Pentagon, where just billions of dollars disappear? Okay, now now we're getting something into something really interesting. Uh, kickbacks for corrupt politicians like uh, State Senator Pan in California. So all of a sudden now we've got an even broader coalition and the Libertarian Party is going to be helping to spearhead this. Uh, and one of the goals that we're working on is it's like um, it's like the goal is to break the two dimensional paradigm of left and right and make it more three dimensional instead of just like three different sectors. It's like there's actually this whole group of people who who are totally not checked into that. And we kind of want to like rise to the top as this like um, stale duopoly farce just kind of falls apart. So that's what we're working on there. There's people from the left, the right, all over the political spectrum. Um, so I'm really excited to be working with them on that. That's uh, I think that's INU.1. That's their website for anybody who's interested. Angela, you're busy. I don't know how you're keeping up with the the, uh, the schedule you have. Plus, now you have uh, a little one in your life. I mean, my goodness, God bless you. You're doing you're doing quite literally the Lord's work. So please keep doing what you're doing. And and we're gonna just go ahead and ask folks to please, if you are you know getting value from what we're doing here at the show, what Angela's doing, please just go ahead and share today's episode to make sure more people hear of the good work that's coming from what. Angela and LP leadership's doing helping reach out for building new coalitions. I mean, this is this is how we win, folks. Um, we have to to reach people where they're at on the issues they care about, and it's the issues that are important. So that's my final thoughts. If you guys really want to find success, it requires you to go out of your comfort zone and actually embrace change. But it requires you to find others who are embracing change as well and do it on those important issues you find the the agreement. Angela, what do you have for us for your final thought today? I think that I'm very excited about the future of the Libertarian Party and the liberty movement at large in this country. It's been a little bit painful watching how slow the progress has been for a lot of people, but a lot of people are waking up. They are fed up. You're seeing the country balkanize a little bit, but in a way where people are just willing to let each other go and maybe just live different lifestyles. And I find that to be incredibly encouraging. More and more people are truth seeking. And I'm excited that the Libertarian Party is going to be the vanguard for that and to help lead people lead the way. All right, Angela. Well, with that, we're going to let you go ahead and be mom. So where can folks go ahead, continue the conversation with you? And also they want to go ahead, maybe sign up to become a member of the third largest political party. Where can they go ahead and do that? You can visit lp.org if you'd like to know more about the party or you'd like to join. Um, you can catch me on Twitter at Angela for LNC Chair. The Libertarian Party is at LP National. If you want to follow the individual work I'm doing, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Angela McArdle. There you go, folks. All links will be included in the show notes. And by the way, one of those links that will be included in the show notes is from today's sponsor. And that is yours truly, because we have a brand new ebook, how to win your local election. Angela, you know, the importance of winning a local elections. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Brian Nichols show is help you win your local election. So whether you're thinking about running for office, you are running for office or you're running for reelection, 
My new free ebook is going to go through talking about how you form your campaign messaging. How do you reach out to your voters? Heck, how do you even build a campaign uh, team? All of that and more free ebook. You can go ahead and find it over on our website, briannicholshow.com forward slash win local, or you can go ahead and uh, click the artwork in your podcast catcher. It'll bring you to today's episode where you'll find the link to go ahead and grab your free copy. But also you can find the link to today's episode, all of the uh, the transcript from today's episode, plus all the links Angela mentioned. And uh, oh, the, by the way, all 655 other episodes of the program. With that being said, follow me at B Nichols Liberty, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, wherever it is you follow us, please go ahead and make sure uh, for video version that is, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, video version of the show. We have you on YouTube, Rumble, and on Odyssey. Just hit the subscribe button and little notification bell so you don't miss a single time we go live. All right, that's all we have for you. With that being said, have a great Tuesday. Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Angela McArdle. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.